purpose of this Winging It podcast journey has always been to shine a light on those things that are important. The things that I think don't get shone. Meghan Markle, she chose to shine her light on the racism that she is experiencing. In the UK, it's a real different vibe to the US. And I think it hit people that live there differently. They didn't realise that we experience racism in our communities deeply, painfully, and it's been long standing. So I wanted to take this opportunity just to sit and reflect on Meghan, on Harry, on the royals, on colorism and racism. I have been impacted as a black woman, a chocolate endowed, melanin blessed black woman. Both colorism and racism has impacted me. So when I heard about Meghan and Harry doing this interview with Oprah, I thought to myself, should she even be speaking for me? Who's this lady of a lighter tone, of privilege, of wealth, of fame, coming forward now to say how the world is, you know, the royal family has treated her with injustice. But Megan wasn't speaking for all of us. She was speaking for herself. And that's all we can do is speak for ourselves and shine that light on those things that affect us, that impact us in order to make a difference. And I don't think she did it selfishly. Even though it was something that impacted her, I think she made the decision to shine that light to help those of us that have experienced racism. Because racism is real. Racism hurts. Racism kills So I'll take this moment to chop it up a little bit about Pierce, about our opinions of the royal family. I'm not a royalist. Sometimes I think, what's the point of them? Really? I know they bring us revenue. I know there's millions of people, trillions that come to the United Kingdom for the royals to stand outside Buckingham Palace to take pictures of this house that they don't even live in. Yeah, I get that. It helps my economy in this country. What else do they do? Not much. We see a yearly Christmas broadcast that I never watch, but millions do. They are quite scandalous. They've treated Princess Diana with absolute mistrust. They've defamated her character. They destroyed her. What good do they do? I'm yet to find out, right? But Meghan made a choice. She's not stupid. She knew what she was getting involved in. So there is a part of me that, Can I say didn't feel sorry for her? When she experienced what she experienced, I have to say, you knew what you were getting involved in. Like many of us, when we get involved in certain situations, those red flags were flying. But you chose to look at them like they were pink. Like you could make a difference. And and I wonder, did she think she could make a difference in that family because she was lighter skinned? Because she wasn't the darkest of the darkest black woman? Because she wasn't as dark as her mum or maybe some of her friends or Venus Williams. Maybe she thought she can get away with it. Maybe she was naive. And that's one word I can really put towards Meghan. She went into a family of royals without the knowledge, the understanding. And she chose love. Well, we hope it's love. She chose love and hoped that love would conquer all. But I don't think it did. I think that love destroyed the royals and continues to destroy the royals. Maybe a good thing, maybe a bad thing. But right now, Megan has brought to the forefront something that we knew for a long time. There's been no black people in the royal family. There's been no light skin mixed, nothing in the royal family. Why? Because they don't mix. There is no interracial intermingling, none of that. That is just not the done thing. So she's come into this family knowing full well, you can just Google the royal family and know that they are not one to mix. So why would you put yourself through that? Well, Harry, for example, he steps outside of the norm. He's always the one that we see in the raves, isn't it? The dances, doing the Usain Bolt, doing the little dutty wine. This is, this is our Harry. Harry's for the people. Harry reminds me of Ed Sheeran. You know, that ginger boy with that little bit of black. He is that guy that could talk tree and do his thing. Like, I really rate Harry. Like, I, I, 
I don't really go for ginger dudes, but I would. In that, I really like that guy. And I could see what she likes about him. He's a real dude. He's a real for the people. And like his mum, I feel like he hasn't displayed a level of racism. He's really gone out to communities, done outreach, gone to Africa, gone to the Caribbean and just mingled. He's gone where they've gone, done what they've done. There's never that separation that you feel from royals. Is it because he was not next to the throne though? Did he feel that he could just be himself because he wasn't? And is it because he knew he was never really going to have to be on the throne? That's why he acted out. Maybe he did, but I'm glad he did it because we got to see that the royals are real people. So Meghan fell in love with Harry, but she also had to fall in love with the royal family somewhat. You know, she naively said that she thought the queen was just like a regular granny. Come on. Really? Queenie? Queenie? Like none of us, not even Brits, think that Queenie is like any of our grannies. I don't know who granny is like Queenie, but it's not the Queen Elizabeth. She is a head of a family, a hierarchy that is very detached from reality. They do not live, breathe or experience the things that we as UK Brits experience whether we're black british black caribbean black african black whatever you want to call yourself those of us that are british and of another culture she does not understand us we know that but she thought you know i'm mega markle <laughs> i'm from a little bit of wealth and um i've been on telly and like you know <laughs> they like me in america because you know I can get auditions and I can get roles. Why am I talking like that? I don't know. Cause that's what I assume that Megan spoke like. I really did. But she chose Oprah's show as a platform. Some of you out there can't stand Oprah because you think, oh, she's not black enough. I don't know how much more black you want Oprah to be, but because she doesn't, I don't know, do a million woman march or you think she doesn't do enough for black people. And that's one of our struggles. Even in our community, we battle against our own. So here's me battling against poor Megan, who probably has more affinity to black culture than I would like to know about. And I see her with her friends like Venus Williams. And I think, why are you begging it? Are you begging it just to be with the people? But no, that could be a really genuine friend. But she chose Oprah Winfrey. She could have chosen David Letterman. She could have chosen uh, another white person in America that's on the news or has their own channel. She chose Oprah Winfrey. They chose and I'm proud that they did because all that did is solidify the need for black representation. Oprah has her own channel that represents black people. Oh, and for me, that was a really good position to broadcast the injustice. So they sat in this little garden. The setting was nice, you know, it's all rosy, summertime. And they spoke about really difficult things. And I can only imagine that they knew exactly how difficult it would be to continue to live in a world that they're going to be publicly judged because they're defaming the character of the royal family. And I feel for them because they don't know what the aftermath is. We don't know how powerful the royal family are, the danger that they could have placed themselves in. We don't know the harm. We're forgetting that Princess Diana died because she chose to have let's say a relationship with someone that wasn't white and wasn't British probably. The same could happen to Meghan and Harry, but they've brought their situation to the forefront. And for that, I respect them fully. They spoke their truth. They sat in the sun and they answered really difficult, challenging questions about their life, their experiences, mental health, the impact that people's behavior can have on your mind to make you feel that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy enough and you don't deserve to bring here, that you don't deserve to live and breathe in this world. Suicide is major. And to know that this wonderful woman felt so deeply that she was considering that this life is not worth living makes me sad. I think one of the most shocking parts of the interview for me was to know that their baby Archie was being discussed behind the scenes about the colour of his skin. It was highlighted that Harry had several conversations with relatives and other people that were not mentioned 
It was very clear that it was not uh, Queen Elizabeth or Prince Philip. But people, relatives, were asking about how dark he would be. How stupid do you have to be to ask those questions? Meghan is mixed race. Archie is going to have some black in him. We never know how dark a child will be. I think that's complete and utter ignorance of the highest degree. These people are educated. They went to some of the highest establishments in the world. Why would you ask such a stupid question? I mean, the rule of thumb is, once you've got a drop of ink in you, you're already black. So I think they needed to just get with the programme. I wonder though, is it because Megan's a lighter skinned female, they thought that maybe Archie wouldn't be dark skin? Let's not talk about the throwback, because we all know about the throwback. When this one child comes, you don't think you know who the baby father is, because you're like, whoa, he was a bit dark. Where did that come from? Or a bit light. But some people have this opinion, maybe if you mix a mixed race person with a white person, there's a bit of dilution that happens. We never know. And that for me is scary, that people are so worried about how dark skin something or someone would be. That brings me to colorism, because I do think it's a real thing. And I've been listening to a lot of debates on Clubhouse, for example, about colorism on Twitter, I've been reading. And it's a really complex web. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you and spit all these words because I hear these girls on, on Clubhouse, they be spitting a whole heap of words that I have to Google and I don't even know what they're talking about. But for me, in short, the understanding is that you experience a level of discrimination due to the tone or intensity of, of your complexion. So the rule of thumb is the darker that you are, the more um, victim to discrimination you are. I would actually say that in my experience, that has been the case. And that has been within my community. As a darker skinned woman, I have experienced overt colorism. And that was in the Caribbean. So my parents are Guyanese and they made a decision to go back to the Caribbean when I was 11 years old. And I remember at my first day of school, they laughed and they said, look at you, you're black. And I said, we're all black because we were all either black or Asian because Guyanese have Indians. I couldn't understand why they were laughing and saying, look, at the words were, look at she, she's black. But we're all black people because in England we say you're black people, but they don't. They said, I'm not black, I'm brown. I'm light brown. She's dark brown, but you're black. As an 11-year-old, can you imagine what that felt like? Because I knew that when they were using the word black, it was not a positive thing. It was a negative connotation to discriminate and hurt me, make me feel isolated, make me feel rejected, make me feel despondent to who I am as a person. From that, I was called tar baby. I was called charcoal. I was called mud. That changed my perception of myself. As an 11 year old, I was not proud of my complexion and I understood why women bleached their skin. I understood why they use products to make themselves lighter. I understood why you would put on makeup to make your skin lighter. I understood why you would wear longer hair or longer weaves to make yourself a little bit more European-like. But this didn't stop. It happened for years. I was discriminated against, I was hurt, I was trodden down because I was a darker skinned girl. I was a girl, I was 11, 12 and that has stung with me. I am now 39 years old nearly and I still remember that pain of feeling completely rejected for being a dark skinned person. Have I stepped into my colour now? Yeah I have because you know what, now we woke It's okay to be dark skinned and proud now. It's okay to be black and beautiful. It's okay to be black and melanin be dripping. It wasn't always like that. And I wonder what Megan experienced. Did Megan ever experience colorism to the level that I have? 
When she went for auditions, I wonder if she as an actress ever felt what I felt when I went for auditions. I've been uh, presenting now for nearly 20 years. And one of my auditions, I drove to Hackney for a black cooking show. And I love food. I love to cook. And I got a call back from this audition because my audition went so well. Yeah, in the queue for the audition, there was women, black, white, Chinese, mixed race, whatever. It was a black production, but they wanted a Afrocentric type person. I was called back to say that I was the best auditioner of that day, but I wouldn't be given the position because I was too dark and my look was not universal enough for the production that they were looking for. They were looking for someone that could meet the needs of everybody watching. So they actually wanted someone that was mixed race. And these were their words. Well, you know, you know what we're looking for. Maybe mixed with big hair that everyone could have an affinity to. I didn't get the role. Not because of my talent. Not because of my skills. But because of the colour of my skin. After that, I didn't audition for years, you know. I honestly can tell you that I did not want to be part of this industry. I did not want to be a presenter. I decided to focus on my career. I got my degree. I got my master's. And I wanted nothing to do with this farce of an entertainment industry. I continue to watch music videos where lighter skinned females cladded in thongs with their asses out were prioritised and I would look to see the, is there a dark skin girl in there? Maybe the one little token, she's at the back somewhere. Only in 2021, 2020, has it become popular and become okay to be that dark skin video vixen that can shake her ass just like the light skin girls, but it wasn't always that way. And if you were born in the eighties, you would know that it wasn't always that way. If you were born in the seventies, you'd know that it definitely wasn't that way. So for Megan and Archie, I understand that colorism for them are real. And as Archie grows and as Archie tans, they'll become realer. Because right now, he's a baby. And he hasn't got the melanin dripping, dripping out of him just yet. We don't know what the texture of Archie's hair will look like. We don't know if it's going to be a 4C, 3C, 2C curl. We don't know. And all I can do is pray for Archie that he takes pride in what he sees in the mirror, that whatever melanin is in his skin, he takes pride in it. So now I'll move on to gal like Trish. You know, like Trisha back in the day that used to do, she was one of the first in the UK that did her own show, similar to Oprah. I haven't heard from Trish in a while, but she came back with fire. She gave Pierce a bit of her mind on Tuesday. Tuesday was a bad day for Pierce that only just got badder. Let's play it. We don't know who the conversation was with or the context, but what you're saying is any context in which that kind of conversation happened is automatically racist. If you are working against a backdrop of non-stop stuff, it doesn't take one straw, you know, it only takes one straw to break the camel's back. And what gets me is why, why is everybody else such an expert about racism against black people? I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry, Piers. I, you don't get to call out what is and isn't racism against black people. You can call out all the other stuff. I'll leave you to call out all the other stuff you want. But leave the racism stuff to us, I eh? think, OK. Get like Trish, you know. I'm not going to lie. Leave it, Yeah. That's all I have to say. Pierce, you can't talk about what is and what isn't racism. Now, I mean, I've got white friends, yeah? And I, I'm not saying that my white friends can't identify what racism is when they see it, because they need to call it out. Because if you're a friend of mine, I know you're for me and you'll never want me to experience racism or discrimination on another level or any level. But you can't speak for the people. So Pierce does have to leave it, you know, because especially the position that he comes from, he's often not of knowledge and education. He, he ain't woke. P Pierce doesn't get it. He has never lived or walked the experience of a black person. And I'm not saying he cannot recognize what it is, but he needs to be very careful how he treads and names it and labels it and how he reflects on the experience that it will have on black people. Only those that have endured racism can speak on racism. I know some black people that claim they've never experienced racism. 
I don't think they've opened their eyes. I think personally that every black person has experienced racism. Every single one of us, whether it be in the workplace, whether it be in the shop, whether it be how the security looks at us, whether it be when you go into a nightclub and you can't get in because you're not on the list. But my girl, white girl, she's not on the list either, but she gets in. We've experienced it, but it's, it's up to us how we choose to address it and how do we choose to label it and how we choose to bring it to the forefront of our lives and if we're brave enough. Are we brave enough to label it and say what it is? Are you brave enough to say that you are racist? Some people say it's just a buzzword. It's just a cop out. I didn't get the job because you're racist. I didn't get this. I didn't get the audition because you're racist. Sometimes people might use it to their advantage. But I know when I use it, I mean it. I don't use words lightly. I say what it is. Have I been racially treated, mistreated? Yes, I have. I know that there are situations in my life that I haven't received a promotion because of the color of my skin, because of the race that I am. Maybe I, I got the job, but I had to go through leaps, hoops and bounds to get the job. I knew I had to interview again for my post because I was a black girl, black woman in a position of power and I had to prove myself. When my treatment is different to your treatment because of the color of my skin and where I come from, that's racism. So speaking of racism, hmm, let, can we talk about the fact that people are prioritizing royalism over racism? The fact that the country is currently divided that they know that what Pierce said on a national scale was unacceptable. What the royals, as in Meghan and Harry, because I must still call them royals, experienced was unacceptable. But I think they're more pissed that the royal family has been put up and challenged in terms of their opinions and their views. Despite knowing that they made Meghan go through such hardship, such a terrible experience, pregnant or not pregnant, but as a human being. It's unacceptable. And I love the way that we have reacted as a nation and how Alex, my man like Alex Beresford, he came through for us. Zaddy, he came through looking like a hot potato cake. He showed up and he represented. I think that we need to all take a step back. Mm. And I understand that you don't like Meghan Markle. You've made it so clear a number of times on this programme a number of times and I understand that you've got a personal relationship with Meghan Markle or had one and she cut you off yeah. she's entitled to cut you off if she wants to has she said anything about you since she cut you off I don't think she has but yet you continue to trash her okay I'm done with this no 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 sorry no uh, all right. do you know what that's you can trash me maybe not my no, no 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 I'm, I'm being Sorry, can't this do is this. absolutely diabolical behaviour. You, he, I'm sorry, but Pierce spouts off on a regular basis, and we all have to sit there and listen. Let me tell you how great that moment was. Yeah, I wanted him to drop down when he left the stage. You know them trips, them awkward trips. See, when Pierce got up, it showed exactly how much of an idiot he is. That he had no leg to stand on. He's also got a lot of chat all of the time. And there was a point recently that I was feeling a little Piercey. Now. I can't stand the guy because he actually didn't stand up for the BS that he believes in. He really felt salty. He was called out. And that's what we have to do as a community. Continue to call out people. I saw Jeannie Yashere come up and she was calling out people on their stuff. We need to do so. We need to stand firm in what we believe in, in whatever it is, that, whatever discrimination that you're experiencing, ageism, disability, colorism racism we need to stand up we need to be firm you know poor alex my man's a weather man you know he could have lost his role for that he could have spoke out of turn we don't know what alex's future we don't even know what conversations have had with alex after that we don't know if he is in a position that maybe in three months we might see him not so much on the tv but he stood up for what we believed and we need to continue to do so because so i rate alex so much for doing so but let me focus on the saltiness. So Pierce gave an interview, yeah? And he explained exactly why he and Meghan no longer speak. Yeah, yeah. We had a two hours in the pub. She had a couple of dirty martinis and a couple of pints. We got on brilliantly. And then I put her in a cab and it turned out to be a cab that took her to a party 
where she met Prince Harry. And then the next night, they had a solo dinner together, and that was the last I ever heard from Meghan Markle. <laughs> but, and I never heard from her again. So what happened? In she, your, uh, she, she ghosted me, Ryan. <laughs> Meghan Markle ghosted did, me. Did she, do you think she just went... I'm afraid. I, look, I really liked it. This is why it hurts. <laughs> no, I, I really liked it. Do you hear my it. man? Do you hear him? He said she ghosted me, and that's why I feel hurt. I hope you heard that because a, a lot of his behaviour is about hurt. And so, although we're talking about racism, colorism, let's talk about relationships right now. Sometimes you gotta let things go, babe. You gotta let it go. If she wasn't into your source, let it drip elsewhere. Because this guy, I don't know what he expected from Meghan Markle. Look at him and look at her. He's punching my guy. My guy, you're punching. Why would he ever think that he would even have an opportunity? But I think he thought he could um, maximise on her relationship, as in maybe get some interviews, whatever, whatever. But she met Harry. So he patterned up the thing for Meghan and Harry. So the saltiness is actually real. It's real in this thing fully. But that's no reason to treat her like this. So no matter what you're going through, no matter how someone ghosted you or treated you, know what you're doing and know how you're impacting them because he is on a public scale. And that's why I want to use this platform and other platforms to speak truth. My truth. I can only speak about my truth. I can't speak about your truth. Only you can do that. So you can get on a camera, you can get on a mic and you can do your thing. But I'm doing mine right now. And I'm talking for my people and not in an attempt to impact or offend any other people. And that comes back to like the Black Lives Matter movement. That I did have friends that said all lives matter. And that was a difficult pill to swallow because, yes, I'm not saying that other lives don't matter. But at this moment in time, what we're doing, we're focusing on the black lives that didn't matter. And that we're not prioritised and we're not put forward and we're not made to feel special. That we're not made to feel that they were worthy. Meghan's life, Archie's life is as relevant as Harry's life. But they've chosen a platform and they've chosen this moment to face the sun and shine a light on the things that impacted them. And we need to stand by the truth. The truth is what she spoke. Was she naive? To think that the royal family would treat her any differently than they treat any other black person in our society. That's how we're treating my girl. And maybe you needed to feel it because those that feel it knows it. Maybe this needed to happen for the light of the world to know what we as black British people experience. This is our reality. This is what we go through every single day. This is how we are treated. This is why we are not prioritised. This is why we do not have a position in Parliament. This is why we do not have a permanent place on TV. This is why when five women are on Loose Women, it's a big thing. It shouldn't be a big thing. It should be a norm. It should be a norm. We need to change the way we live. We need to change our attitudes to racism, colorism, and discrimination. Let me tell you something. When I came on this journey, I didn't even want to watch the Meghan Markle interview. Because I, as I said in the beginning, I didn't think she had a place or position to talk for me. But I took a moment, and this is what I want all of us to do. Take a moment and think about people's positions. The things that impact them. The things that mean and matter to them. I've reflected. I was hard on Megan, you know. I was hard on her because I saw her as a per person of privilege that had no right to speak for a community that maybe she didn't have the deepest affinity to. So did I experience, did I give her some colorism? I think I did. And I hold my hands up to that. And I could say, sorry, Megs, I hear you. I hear your voice. I hear your experience. I hear your struggle. And that's what I want us all to do, to reflect and take a moment where we may have been colorist or racist or discriminatory and look differently at our behaviours and to make changes. We're human. We make mistakes. We grow. We learn. And I hope that my friends, white, black, Chinese or other, can learn from me and I can learn from them. Because maybe they're experiencing things that I don't even know. And I want to use this platform, as I said, to showcase that. I want us to take a minute, while we're not in the world, to speak to people, to get to know them on a deeper level to appreciate what they're going through, what they're experiencing, what they're challenged with, what makes them tick, to help and to heal. 
We're only human, but together we can make a difference. Thank you.